So we've just found a really exciting find, but also quite common, um, and one that's really, really worth knowing. Um, you can see it on this tree stump. It always grows on dead wood, and often tree stumps, actually, it seems to be its favorite place to be. And this is quite a large amount of it. You can see it kind of stacked up here in this big, um, sort of big tranche of it on this, on this one side of this trunk, all the way down to here. Um, and it is called turkey tail, or Trametes versicolor. And it is, like I said, really, really common. You'll find it on dead wood all over the UK. Um, it has a few identifying features which we need to show you first. So the first one is, this is quite a large piece, but you can, you will see when you look at it close up, you'll see lots and lots of stripes on the top, almost like growth rings on the top. And they can be quite different colors. So you've got, you know, on these ones here, you've got a range of different colors. You've got some lighter ones, you've got darker ones. Um, they can be you know, purples and browns and blacks, but you always have these, this stripy upper texture and it always ends with a white edge. So uh, a creamy or white colored edge is always, the, always gonna be on the leading edge. So even some pieces that are a bit thinner, like this has still got a white creamy edge on there and it's still got the stripes. So that's the first identifying feature. Um, the second one and a really important one is the underside. Um, it has thousands and thousands of tiny little pores and that's how it distributes its spores. Um, and these pores are, I mean, you can barely see them. You have to really get kind of close up and you can see them. Like, it's almost like tiny little pinpricks on the bottom underside, but you can certainly feel them. Um, and it is, uh, yeah, easy enough to feel those, that kind of like a rough texture, like a shark skin or something. Um, so it is a, a polypore, so it has loads and loads and loads of pores on the underside. That's a really important identifying feature. So are the stripy colors. So the fact is it's growing on wood and that white or creamy colored edge. Um, the, this underside is usually white or creamy colored um, as well. Uh, and it will grow, yeah, like I said, you know, you get big like loads of, loads of it kind of growing in, in tranches like this on, on a piece of wood. Um, there's, other, there's actually other bracket fungi growing on this same piece of wood. And just to show you a kind of difference between them, this is another one, uh, it's like a, another kind of classic polypore growing on a piece of wood. You get lots of these sorts of things. They tend to be quite fat and, uh, and quite spongy and, and big. And you compare that to the Trametes uh, or the turkey tail, which is quite thin. And in fact, the name Trametes means thin. It's a Latin name. Uh, Trametes means thin. Versicolor means multicolored. So the main thing with this fungus is it's not edible in such you wouldn't gonna put it in a, in a dish to eat, but it is medicinal. And in fact, it is incredibly medicinal. Um, it is a very, very powerful medicinal fungi. It's commonly available. Um, you find it all over the place on dead stumps, as I said. Um, so it's a really good one to learn and to, to, to harvest. You can have it safely every day. Um, and there's two main ways of, of eating it. Um, the first one is you could just kind of stew it up, just put that, clean it up a little bit, put it into, into some water and, and simmer it away for hours and hours and hours, and it'll extract a lot of the goodness from it. As long as you don't kind of hard boil it, keep it on a simmer for several hours to extract the goodness from it. And then you could just use that as a tincture. You can you just put that into other drinks um, or you could dry it out and powder it, which is nothing. It dries very, very quickly and you don't need to do anything to dry it really. Just leave it in a kind of airy place. Um, so out of direct sunlight, but just put it in an airy place. I, I stick these on my kind of like bookshelves. They're all over the place in my house and, and they dry off really, really quickly. Within a day or so, it'll be dried out. And then you can just kind of whiz it up in a blender and turn it into a powder and put that in pretty much anything you like, smoothies and drinks and foods, and you'll get all of the medicinal benefits. And the medicinal benefits are huge. Um, it's really worth looking into all of the medicinal benefits, but the two main areas of medicinal use for this. The first one is the immune system. It's an immune system booster, but it's also an immune system modulator, which means that it, it stops the immune system overreacting. So if you suffer from any kind of autoimmune disease or have any uh, autoimmune responses or even if you've had something like covid or long covid and you, one of the main effects of covid is, is to trigger an overreaction in the immune system um, an autoimmune response and this will help modulate that help reduce it help it keep it the, the immune system working healthily and not overreacting which can be very very damaging to things like your nervous system so it's an, it's an immune system booster. It'll generally keep your immune system performing better. It'll kind of keep you, uh, you know, less inclined to get colds and viruses and those sorts of things. But it's an immune system modulator as well. It keeps the immune system behaving the way it should do. I'm, I use this all the time for exactly that reason. 
So um, it is a, fa a fantastic medicinal fungi just from a general health point of view and immune system point of view. But the other massive area of uh, research that's going on in it, in this, uh, with this fungi at the moment is in cancer. So it is known to have cancer fighting properties. Um, it will reduce tumors and the aggressiveness of tumors. It can uh, literally directly fight the cancer, but because of it, that immune system support that it offers, it's also now been proven, uh, scientifically proven to help with people who are undergoing cancer treatments. So um, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, it protects your healthy cells. So while you're going through those treatments, this will actually help protect the cells um, uh, from, from the damage caused by those treatments, which means that the treatment is then affecting the cancer and not you. And so they're starting now to prescribe this in quite high doses to go alongside chemotherapy and radiotherapy. It is a, very much a cancer fighting, cancer curing fungi, and like I said, commonly available. So whether you're using it for that, whether you're using it for immune system boosting, um, it is a fantastic fungi to learn and start to incorporate into your diet. So I just found um, what looks like false turkey tail. So this will always be growing on dead wood, just like turkey tail does. Um, there's actually a piece of dead wood under here and that's what it's growing out of. It just looks like it's coming out of the mud. Um, and it's superficially similar to turkey tail. It has a kind of, um, it has the sort of stripy top um, layers to it, um, but not as much, not as obviously. It also tends to be a more orangey color, but turkey tail can vary quite enormously in color. So the main differentiation is underneath. On false turkey tail, on the underside, it's scaly. There's no pores to it. It feels smooth and scaly. Um, so that's the difference with, with, with false turkey tail and real turkey tail. I happen to have a piece of turkey tail in my hand, rather large piece, but on the underside of turkey tail, so the tops, I mean, again, it's pretty hard to make mistake the difference, but um, when it looks like this on a stump, you could, you could perhaps think it was turkey tail. It's certainly thin enough to be, um, and it has some stripiness to the top of it, but the underside, that's the best way of knowing. So the underside, false turkey tail is like scaly. It just feels like, almost like a piece of leather. And on turkey tail, there's tiny little pores. And if you rub your finger over it, you'll feel the kind of roughness to it. Um, and if you look closely, you'll see tiny, tiny, tiny little pores. And that's the main difference. So false turkey tail, which grows on dead stumps, just like turkey tail does. Um, the underside is the bit to look for. Doesn't have any pores. And it, I mean, it's, it's inedible. It's not poisonous. It wouldn't do you any harm, but it's just inedible. Whereas turkey tail is super good for you.